giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, folks, and welcome to our week six episode of the Mouth of the South recap. This week, we'll be recapping two events, the Central Missouri Regional and the Show Me State, as well as do a deep dive into how the very first Texas District Championships went down. Recapping for first updates now, I'm Marco. I'm Nick. I'm Michael. And I'm Colin. All right, before we dive into the event recaps this week, we want to talk about an awesome giveaway on today's show, a limited edition fun logo mug courtesy of the awesome folks at Redfish Robotics. Let's bring on Tyler to tell us how you can win one so that you too may enjoy your beverage of choice in style. <laughs> Very nice. So, uh, so yes, once again, Redfish Robotics, giving away the uh, fun mug. Check them out, tinyurl uh, forward slash Redfish Robotics. they got a bunch of different mugs up there. Uh, and our uh, awesome South crew, uh, maybe we can have some context here, has uh, provided the keyword Missouri Matters <laughs> into the uh, – <laughs> chat that's gonna be two words by the way so missouri matters uh type that in the chat right now uh, we'll be running that through the uh, end of this show uh that's your opportunity to win don't forget our subscribers get five times chance to win and you do need to at least follow the channel so make sure you click that little follow button up top and if you choose to subscribe five times luck so missouri matters in the chat and good luck for the rest of the show all right. Thank you, sir. So only two events to recap this week. So before we throw on our boots and hats and mosey on down to the ATX, let's send it over to Colin to tell us about the regional that went down in Sedalia, Missouri. Thanks, Marco. As the last regional competition of the year, the Central Missouri Regional was the last chance for 36 teams in attendance to qualify for Worlds. Top teams attending who had yet to qualify for Worlds included 1939, 1987, 2451, 5006, 6424, and 6886. At the same time, several teams had already qualified, but were still seeking their first regional win of the year. These these teams include 1806 SWAT, 3284 Camdenton, and 4522 Team Scream. Qualification rounds were very exciting to watch, even though the Rocket was only completed in two out of the 72 qualification matches. And coming out of qualification matches, it was 3284 Camdenton Lasers, who held a strong ranking point lead with an average ranking score of 2.75. Right behind them was uh, 1756 Argos, uh, and number two, and number three was 4522 Team Scream, and number four was 2451 Ponage. The top two teams would team up to form the number one, number one alliance, and 4522 would pick up Team 6424 South Panther, and 2451 would pick up Team 6886 the Synthesizers to form out their alliances. Quarterfinals started out very exciting as the number eight alliance of 5889, 1785, and 5119 were able to upset the number one alliance in the first match thanks to, thanks to 5119 limiting 1756 to only four cycles, allowing the blue alliance to take match one, 67 to 60. In the next two matches, the number one alliance came, brought it all together and powered through the defense to move on to face number four in the semis. Everything went downhill for the number one alliance as 1756 broke down and had to rely on their defensive ability to try to get to finals. As a result, the number four alliance of 3931, 1806, and 5550 were able to move on to the finals. On the other side of the bracket, the number six alliance of 1987, Broncobots, 1939, the Knigets, and 1094, the Channel Cats, were able to upset the number three seed of 2451 Ponage, 6086 Synthesizers, and 7141 in two incredibly close matches. The first one was a dead tie of 63-63. Blue took the win thanks to tiebreakers. The next, the next match came down to one point, 77 to 76, coming down to a late penalty on the Red Alliance defender, allowing number six to move on to the semis to face number four alliance of 4522, Team Scream, 6424, South Panther, and 2333. The difference maker in this matchup was the lack of defense played against 1987 and 1932, allowing them to outscore the crowded Red Alliance side of the field and move on to the finals to face the number four alliance. 
Finals one was dead even until the very end of the match, where Blue pulled ahead thanks to 1094 Channel Cats climbing up to level two to have. Throw in, throw in a couple penalty points, and Blue takes Finals 1, 72 to 63. Finals 2 was a similar story, where the scores were very close until the very end, where 39-31 were barely it barely missed their level 3 climb, due, uh, and Blue won the match, 77 to 64. Congratulations to the number 6 alliance of 1987, 1939, and 1024, and shout-outs to 5437 Rocky Balboa Bots for winning engineering, engineering Inspiration, and... 2451 Ponage for taking home Chairman's Award. With that regional season, with that the regional season concludes, and it's it's all about district champs. Yeah, it's exactly right, Colin. So it all came down to this: after 10 district events, the inaugural first in Texas district state championship took place this past weekend at the let's call it cozy um, Palmer Event Center in Austin. 34 invitations for Thouch Champs still hung in the balance, and with an absolute all-star lineup of teams, the promise of an action-packed event was there from the start, and boy, did it deliver. How good was the competition? Habdock and RP was flat-out expected in most matches, occurring 65% of the time. The Rocket RP, while still exciting, was not exactly rare, having occurred in 13% of the, of the time. Even Unicorn matches weren't quite so magical, as those occurred 9% of the time. World record scores with penalties, it had that. World record scores without penalties, it had that too. World record high scores in Elims. Yep. Uh, level of quality on display was that good. With 128 matches on the schedule all told, the action was fast and furious, and the standings were a roller coaster for almost all teams as the results of any given match could propel you in the standings. Uh, a lot of exciting matchups and qualifications, a lot of marquee matchups throughout those two days. Um, quarterfinal 111 saw the schedule got thrown together an alliance of 128. Two, or 148, excuse me, 2468 and 3005, which delivered in a big way as they completed both rockets for the first time in Texas and only the fifth time in the world, proceeding to set those world records for a qualification match that we alluded to earlier. However, while there were a lot of high scores flying about, if you think this whole event was just an old-fashioned Texas shootout, then you definitely had not been paying attention to the Yano Estacado Robo Raiders, who match after match used a strategy of dogged defending and a reliable have three climb to start out 6-0 and and rise to the top of the standings with a 3.5 RP average, uh, defeating some of the state's best offensive teams along the way. However, after two hard-fought days of matches, the final standings did return to some sort of normalcy as 148 Robo Wranglers and 118 Robo Knots grabbed the top two spots, followed by Team Appreciate and the Robo Raiders. Alliance selection saw 148 go the all-black everything route and select 3310 Blackhawk Robotics and then 3035 Droid Rage as their second pick. On the other side of the bracket, 1817 Robo Raiders would team up with 3847 Spectrum and then pick up 2714 on the way back to finalize the number three alliance. While the number one alliance was a strong favorite, they would have to overcome some really tough challenges on their side of the bracket. Right out of the gate, the quarterfinal matches against the number one, number eight alliance of 6672 Keller Fusion, 3005 Robo Chargers, and 6800 Valor saw scores of 113 to 107 and 106 to 101. The difference for the number one alliance was their ability to execute a reliable double half three climb, courtesy of 148's forks. In the semifinals, the number one seed again had to dig deep as the number four alliance, which included this year's rookie sensation 7521 Ultimate Robotics and last year's rookie sensation 7179 Crossfire, and who would throw up scores of 103 and 111 in their losing efforts. While the scoreboard was blazing on that side of the bracket, the other half saw the number four alliance execute their two offense, one defense strategy to maximum effect. The team from Texas Tech was looking to create some March Madness of their own, and they certainly delivered. With a strategy of 3847 Spectrum on a rocket, barbecue on the cargo ship, and Robo Raiders in the face of the opposing alliance, the number three alliance would go on to defeat the number six in the quarters, limiting them to 82 and 80 points respectively. And then the vaunted 118 and 2468 alliance in the semis in three matches as uh, 2714 finally succeeded with their sucky boy climber at the most crucial of times to pull out the upset. In the finals, while the blue alliance gave it their all, the firepower from the number one alliance of 148, 3310, and 3035 droid rage was simply too much to overcome. The two finals went to the red alliance with comfortable margins of 92 to 71 and 93 to 58. Congratulations to the very well-deserved winning alliance who definitely earned that win. Also, big props to the three district cha uh, champs chairman's winners, 2881 Lady Cants, 5427 Steel Talents, and 5431 Titan Robotics. And a final well done to 1477 Texas Torque and 2468 Team Appreciate for the EI awards. So, 
quite the event, really by far the most competitive field that I've ever had the pleasure to be a part of. And it was just an absolute blast to be on the field with with and against so many amazing teams that the Robochargers respect and admire. Uh, Michael, you and I talked quite a bit throughout and after the event. So as a veteran of the district system, what are some of your thoughts about the first edition of the first in Texas district champs? Well, thanks, Marco. Um, as you said, uh, I have been in the district system for a while now. I started uh, on Team Rush 27 2009 uh, up through 2013. So I've seen a lot of district play. Uh, last year was my first time in a regional system. And then, of course, Texas switched this year. So uh, I just want to note before I start getting into some of this that uh, this is all just constructive criticism meant for first in Texas. Uh, it's meant for improvement in the upcoming years and not bashing whatsoever. I had a blast and I, I know a lot of other teams did as well. Um, but I think I'm going to address the, uh, the elephant in the room first and that the venue was a poor choice for the event. Uh, it was super, super packed. Uh, I, For most of the tournament, I actually stood on a table in our pit because uh, our pit was right on that corner and I could actually see down into the uh, into the event. So um, because we just purely didn't have enough room in the stands. Uh, now, I would like to point out, though, that they first in Texas did pull off something pretty cool where they gave each team a set of six tickets that you could then use for your scouts in the middle of the stadium. I thought that was actually a fantastic idea. Hadn't really quite seen that before. So that was pretty neat. Um, but I would like to see uh, Texas dis district champs eventually get to the quality that I'm used to in Michigan with, you know, multiple divisions. And I think that's coming in future years. So um, additionally, uh, I was very surprised by the deep playing fields. I know in Michigan, I had been kind of spoiled by seeing all these great teams play so often, but I think Texas gave them a run for their, their money. Um, I was super surprised by some of these Elim matches, uh, the, especially like the, I think one of the scores 111 by, uh, Crossfire, whatever that alliance was. I can't remember and the ultimate. full set. Yeah. Ultimate and howdy bots. There we go. And, uh, thanks guys. So those, that was pretty cool. They put up some great numbers and I also like to see how many teams uh, were sent to worlds too. Uh, I was uh, impressed at how deep it went down, um, which is giving a lot of te Texas teams that hadn't been to Worlds uh, another chance. Uh, we are going to need some increased number of district events, and I think that's also coming up in the future too because there's uh, they're pretty full events most of the season. And then the last topic I'd like to mention before I let you guys in is um, the whole Woody Flowers nomination. I know there was a big uh, discussion on Chief about only having one nomination, but personally, I think that was the right choice. Uh, having one Woody Flowers Award winner coming out of, out of the championship event uh, makes that award so much more prestigious. Uh, so that was pretty cool to see uh, that award given out. And I think I hope that they stick with that model because eventually only one uh, mentor is given that anyways at the at the national level. So uh, keeping it a super prestigious award down at the state level is pretty cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um... In regards to Woody Flowers, I did want to congratulate Leslie Reese of 3310 for picking up the Texas Woody Flowers Award. Uh, very well earned. Yeah. yeah, I think your point, uh, Michael, on the increased number of districts events is, is well made. I, you, know, you had a lot of uh, teams that had a lot of difficulty getting into uh, the events that they wanted to be. I know that there's rumors that they're moving to maybe as many as 13 or 14 events for next year. So uh, I think that'll make it uh, a lot better experience for teams, especially in some of the events that we played in this year, where similar to uh, the, the Palmer Event Center were some pretty cramped quarters. You know, you're talking about going down to nine by nine pits and one way traffic in certain hallways and having to take off bumpers to go through doors and, and things like that. So hopefully, uh, you know, for, for the first year of it, I think, uh, all the volunteers made it happen, uh, and and so that's another little not a concern because I think ultimately it will. But as we continue to increase, we went from five or six events to ten to thirteen, fourteen, whatever it is next year. The volunteer structure needs to be there. You're asking that much more from the volunteer group, but uh, I'm sure it'll come around uh, as it goes. But for me personally, as as a rookie in the district system versus you know all of your experience, it, it was phenomenal. As they're saying in the chat, PJ mentioned districts are our districts great. They absolutely are. I loved everything about it, I'm, and I'm very excited to continue to improve and see what this does to the competition. We already saw teams that historically would have their one and done events go to two events, go to state champs, and be so much better for it. And I'm, I'm excited to see that continue amongst more teams the more we're in this uh, in the system. And uh, to address some some people in the chat, randomizer seventy seven, you talked about uh, one chairman's per district champion. I think that's an interesting uh, conversation to be had. Uh, I think also Dean's list, you could kind of go uh, through that or engineering inspiration, some of these high end awards. Uh, it could be interesting to see if you you restrict that to only one. Uh, I, I think I would be in support of that as uh, you're putting more 
more emphasis on making it to states and being that team at states. Now everyone in your state knows before moving on to world. So I think that's something that would be pretty cool to see. I think my uh, the only award that I would be against only limiting it to one is Dean's List, given that is a group of people that gets announced at Worlds. Um, so it should follow the similar model at District Champs, where there's a group, small group of people who get it, and then they go on for Worlds and that, their chance to get it there. It's also only two at, at regional level as well, so that would still mirror what regionals do. Yeah, I forgot about them announcing more than one Dean's List, at least at Worlds. So yeah, that's a very good point. All right, well, uh, let's move on to a different discussion. So uh, you guys want to take it away there? Yeah. Um, so after our week six competitions, it became clear that an abundance of teams were making changes to their robot in order to get ready for Worlds. Colin, why don't you talk about one of these changes that you saw this weekend? Yeah, I think one of the most notice noticeable changes that a team made was uh, Team 1986 Broncobots down at uh, Central Missouri. Uh, 1987, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so they kind of added a 694 inspired, inspired suction uh, climber, and they used that to eventually go on to win the event. I I really liked uh, going to the pit and looking up close to it. They they really put something nice together with that one. And I, I think we'll start to see a lot more teams kind of add similar types of climbers coming into champs. Another team I want to shout out is 1806. At the Greater Kansas City Regional, they weren't looking too hot. But this, at this regional, they added a new intake, they added a climber, and they really kind of put it all together and put a strong showing up. Another robot, I guess, to, to fit in that role would be 4587, Jersey Voltage. Um, to no doubt, I, <laughs> every year they seem to be doing this, uh, and it works very well for them, too, is they are always, every single tournament they go to, they're iterating on their robot, and they're making sure that they are ready to go for Worlds. And to no doubt, it, it happened again at, at Champs this weekend. It's pretty cool if you guys go back and go through the Blue Alliance and, and look at each of the match that they play and kind of watch them, you can actually see the progression uh, that they make on their robot. We actually had to discard pretty much all of our data on 4587 because be between the front and the end of the tournament, it was just entirely different. They, they pretty much only kept their drivetrain and a few portions of their lift. Everything else was just built through the, the entire tournament. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mentioned that we actually did the exact same thing in our scouting meeting. We looked at the numbers like, okay, well, we're going to rank them based off their last two or three uh, two or three matches and just extrapolate that because it's so much different robot. I remember even talking to them at, uh, at Greenville, um, talking to one of the mentors, and I was like, what are you guys doing? I was like, well, we just ripped off our entire intake. We're trying a whole new system. So it's been iterating, not just the state champs, but but throughout. So I think that's a, a very great example of that. And for me, uh, 148, <laughs> having been on uh, the business end of their ability to buddy climb uh, in quarter finals uh it's such a simple effective system um obviously that fits the 148 uh ethos um allowing them to share the hap three with many different types uh styles of robots really made the difference for them obviously was the um difference in the score in their first three elims matches the fact that they could get up there with 30 through 10 and get that uh, double half three and I, I imagine we'll be seeing um just like we're seeing a lot of the the sucky boy climbers now we're going to be seeing a lot of these plus one uh, fork climbers i would imagine uh heading into champs um, for me, it has to be a 7179 Crossfire. Um, they changed their intake system completely, ditched the floor pickup um, in favor of adding a 1619 style cargo mechanism on top of a hatch mechanism that looks a lot like uh, Mad Towns and Cheesy Poofs and uh, 1684 Chimeras, um, where it uses the wheels to grab the center of the hatch and just suck it in. Um, another team that I did want to shout out is 3310, who added on the ability to suction cup climb. Um, and they were getting it tuned throughout the event. Uh, near the end, it looked like it was pretty dialed in, uh, but they didn't have to use it because 148 was able to fork them. Um, so I think that uh, double climb from 3310 will really uh, help them out at champs. Great. Now, now, moving on, let's take a look at our Southern Region Top 10 for the week. Uh, just as a reminder, we're changing things up. We're now looking only at the votes cast by people in that Southern Region. So it's our, our local Southern Region Top 10. So without further ado, let's take a look at who made that Top 10. Um, in the number one spot this week, um, to no surprise, 148 Robo Wranglers, uh, followed by their all-black everything teammates, 3310 Black Hawk Robotics, uh, 3847 Spectrum in the number three spot, uh, and then the third member of that winning state champs line, 3035 Droid Rage in the number four spot. 7521, the amazing rookie this year, Ultimate Robotics at number five. Um, 
Michael's own 6800 Viperbots Valor at number six. Uh, Crossfire 7179 in the number seven position. At number eight, 5414 Paradox. Number nine, 118 The Robonauts. And number 10, 2714 Barbecue round out our top 10. Um, for me, the list is great. I think there's a lot of deserving teams, but it's um, it's a little crazy that there's no 2468 anywhere on this list. But, um, you know, obviously you got to get out there and vote to make it happen. Uh, something I would like to point out, the, the whole reason for the Missouri Matters, if you look at the rankings, they're all Texas teams this week. So, um, yeah, like I said, or Barco said earlier, make sure you guys get out there and vote. But that's where the uh, that came from. Uh, for me personally, looking at that, number seven and number eight. Number seven being Crossfire. We already talked about their their robot, but I remember watching their robot behind the the glass when I was waiting for one of up, our upcoming matches and just watching 7179 just go ham at the rocket. They just... They were spectacular to watch. That was pretty sweet to see. And then, of course, 5414 Paradox. They've been a friend all season. Uh, super nice team. I love their team. And uh, their ability to just go through the, the cargo ship is pretty incredible. Uh, and then finish with their crazy CG style, like flip onto the hab and then bring their whole ch chassis up with them. That's pretty cool to watch as well. And a well-deserved Auton Award for them, too. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so first off, Missouri matters. Uh, there's more in the southern region than just Texas. So I'm going to go off and name some of the top teams at the Central Missouri Regional. So number one should be definitely 3284 Camden 4H. They're one of the best cycling robots I've seen this year. Uh, they're kind of flying under the radar, but I think come champs, they're going to be really, a really, really high pick. Uh, another star, uh, star team to look at is 4522 Team Scream. Have a really quick climb, really good cycling. 6424. Unfortunately, they missed champs this year, but they are a really good robot also. And then I'm going to shout out 1987 for winning Central Missouri. I think the biggest thing for me is 3035 being so high. Don't get me wrong. They were great. But looking at this list, you have Alliance captains and first picks that really rocked it um, throughout the entire event and his limbs. And being the last pick of the draft, it doesn't really feel like they belong in the number four spot ahead of teams like 6800, 7179, and 5414. And it's also really interesting that 118 is down in the number nine spot. Um, they did have issues against defense, but they were still rock solid throughout the event, and, you know, ranking second, getting the semis. Um, so they probably deserve to be higher. Uh, with that note, though, I, I mean, 118 obviously is a fantastic robot. They did seem to drop a lot uh, at this last tournament. They were dropping quite a few hatches or getting problems with the human player station, although partially that uh, there was... I guess that would be another discussion topic for another time, but there were some issues with that that human uh, human player station for sure, as discs were falling out when they weren't supposed to. Uh, so they were they were struggling with some things all weekend that was re just unfortunate events for them. Okay, folks. Well, I think that just about does it for it this week. Um, before we go, let's hand out some sweet swag and draw for a winner for our fun logo mug giveaway. Tyler, take it away. All right, once again, you type in Missouri Matters because, unfortunately, no Missouri teams on the top 10. However, I will say make sure you tune in tomorrow for the global FRC Top 25 and FRC Top 10 because those rankings are drastically different than what uh, the local rankings are. So it will be very interesting to see uh, how uh, the locals uh, match up against the uh, global poll of about 600 voters. So uh, make sure you check that out tomorrow on the FRC Top 25 starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and for the uh, fun mug, the drawing for that, once again, the winner is going to be uh, Death Domination. Congratulations, uh, Death Domination. Uh, you have won uh, the fun mug. Make sure you please shoot first updates now, either in Twitch or our Discord, a private message with your first name, last name, mailing address, zip code, all that fun stuff as well, too, so we can shoot that out to you. And make sure you go check out all this cool stuff at tinyurl.com forward slash redfishrobotics. Cool. Thank you, Tyler. And thanks to everyone who has watched. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is a place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you've got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. On behalf of myself, Colin, Nick, Michael, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in to our very first season of Mouth of the South. It's truly been a blast, and we're looking forward to doing it again for you next season. Thanks as well for all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is We the North. See you guys at South Champs. Good luck and goodbye. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.
Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.